Hello and welcome to beautiful Atlanta, Georgia for the 2022 Gold Series Atlanta Open. So nice to be back in Atlanta, of course, the home of the 1996 Olympics. But this weekend, the AB player, players completely taking over and the weather has been hot. Dave Blanton <laughs> alongside Cameron Irwin and we have quite a matchup. The Brazilians looking Versus. to do their thing, trying to win their fourth actually tournament this year on the AVP tour. Yeah, they've done a phenomenal job through the tour series, having won three events already. So we already know Larissa and Lily, you say those names and you better watch out, especially with Larissa, the lizard in the backcourt. I mean, one of the best defenders to ever have played the game, especially in the women's side, just an absolute standout. But they're facing off against Skirmerhorn and Quiggle in the contenders bracket. So it's win or go home. Well, let's head down to the sand to Mark. Producer who, Dan holding up four, now three, now who, two. With the introduction of the players. Hello. Well, we had a good one, didn't we, ladies and gentlemen? A three-setter, and we are ready for some more high-class volleyball. And let's meet the team, shall we? Looking to stay alive and move on here in Atlanta. This first player out of Punta Vedra Beach, Florida, played her college ball at Pepperdine, and I gotta tell you, two of the nicest parents, the only only rivaled by maybe your partner's parents. Ladies and gentlemen, let me hear it for Corinne Quiggle. But the good thing about Sarah's parents is they also come with Phoenix, and Phoenix follows them around everywhere, which is amazing. Out of Elon, originally from Colfax, North Carolina, let me hear it for Sarah Skirmerhorn. And their opponents, a team that we have come to love here on the AVP. Well, they came to love each other a long time ago. The wife and wife pair, the Maestrinis. This first player originally out of Vitoria, Brazil. Let me hear it for Lili. <laughs> and her partner, the Winningest player all time on the F5VB World Tour out of Brazil. 62 wins on the World Tour. Three-time Olympian. She is Larissa. We're all set to go here. Number five versus number 10. Larissa Maestrini and Lily Maestrini. We'll just call them Larissa and Lily. They have had a fantastic season so far, winning three tour level events on the AVP tour and across the net, Corinne Quiggle and Sarah Skirmerhorn, the number 10 seed. And we are all set to go. It is extremely humid, very warm. Yesterday we had a weather delay, which backed up some of the matches. So we got a lot of volleyball to get to today. and. It's going to be a blast. Here's Corinne Quiggle with the serve. Quiggle with the dig is going to have an opportunity to put this one away, and she goes high over and down the line. Corinne Quiggle played her college volleyball at Pepperdine University. She has a top finish of third, and that happened this year in Muskegon, an event that the Brazilians actually won. And a huge hit by Lily cross court. Yeah, you got to love that big time swing, especially to start off a match, right? You want to start to assert yourself and get that aggressiveness going. Make sure the defense knows you can bring just about every tool in your toolbox. Here's a good look at Skirmerhorn. She goes for the back set, trying to go deep to the corner of the retreating Lily, but she misses that one. a team that has gone just about everywhere in terms of internationally. That's Skirmerhorn and Quiggle. So getting a lot of reps internationally. Time on the sand. Nice to see them back domestically. Yeah. Larissa going back to serve. 40 years of age now. Resides in Celebration, Florida. Look at that dig by Larissa. 
Larissa had an absolutely stellar career internationally, playing with her former partner, Juliana, and she did it with fantastic defensive plays just like that. The three-time Olympian is Larissa. A great serve right down the middle by Larissa and completely confuses Quiggle and Skirmerhorn, who have to make a decision on that middle ball. That one was difficult. Usually the cross-court player is in control in terms of calling and taking that middle ball. Yeah, especially you have a little bit of a better angle from where that ball is coming from to protect the middle. The person down the line has to protect against the line, which is the shortest distance from the server to the other side of the court. But I did like the thought there from Larissa. I know she scored up the middle, but she has been thinking about that middle ball, right? So she looked for the outside, the right sideline. Sarah Skirmerhorn back to serve. Sarah's best finish was a second place back in 2019. And she's been trying to improve upon that for some time. She played with Hildreth back then, and I believe that final was against April Ross and Alex Kleinman. You know, it's interesting. You just saw Skirmerhorn pull off the net there on what she thought might be an out-of-system play. But I have a feeling if you're blocking against Larissa and Lily, you better stay up there at the net a second longer because you have one of the best setters to have played the game. Best setter on the FIVB Tour, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 14, 16, and 17. So yeah, uh, that's Larissa right there. You might want to stay at the net a second longer. She'll make bad look real good. I think Larissa has mellowed as the years have gone by. She used to be very fiery with her old partner, Juliana. A little different situation now. But I uh, always loved the intensity and the fire and the passion that she would bring on the court. And she's still doing it to, to this day. I think it's a little different when your uh, spouse is next to you on the court. <laughs> Got to make sure all is well on the court as well as off the court. These two just so friendly too. Two great personalities on the tour. Always a smiling face if you meet them in the elevator or wherever you go. That's a nice set. But a nice block from Skirmerhorn. I like that. Instead, even, even on that out-of-system play, she already made the adjustment there. Yeah, Skirmerhorn, quite the blocker. Moves really well laterally at the net, very quick. And, you know, I'm surprised that um, we haven't seen her later on Sunday more often. I think she really hit the ground running back in 2019. and. It's tough out there. There's so many players each year coming out from the college ranks. And I think the field continues to get stronger and stronger every year. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, we were do trying to do a little bit of math looking through the 32 women's team, or excuse me, the 32 women in the 16 teams here in Atlanta. And one of the interesting notes is there were, at minimum, 21 of them have come through beach volleyball programs. That time, Skirmerhorn trying to go on that second contact. Ball landing in the bottom of the net. So Larissa and Lily off to a very solid start here on stadium court. Nice set and a big rip by Quiggle on the right. Yeah, I love that attack, especially attacking closer to that sideline, opening up a few more angles, especially that aggressive, hard-driven angle to the right. Larissa's so good at taking a look at the defense and really controlling that ball. It's not an easy skill to take your eye off the ball, then look at the defense, and then 
re recalibrate and focus on the ball and be able to hit it. It all happens in a split second. Yeah, and I think the other point, too, is the fact that that's happening within your approach. So you're already moving to that ball. The ball has already been set at that point. So to take your eye off of it, drop your eyes after taking your first step towards the direction of the ball, that's not easily done. Then finding it back again. There's a lot of trust that takes place in terms of timing and tempo with your partner. Here's Skirma Horn. She played at Elon College. She's 6'1". She's a full-time blocker. You see how she gets to the net, decides to drop right there. Not a good decision with Larissa, who will usually go at the retreating blocker, but more often than not, she likes to go down the middle. Well, as you watch this play out, too, this is why beautifully done. A lot of times you want to try and force the ball or excuse me, force the player to try and play the ball in space. And when you see that retreating block, that middle is always a good position. You'd have to play that ball well outside your body. 11-9, Larissa and Lily leading here. First set. We're here at Atlantic Station in Atlanta, the first Gold Series event of the 2022 season. And Why is that important? More money, more points, and playing, playing first spot in the AVP Championships in Phoenix, which will be an indoor event played in downtown Phoenix. And only six teams will make that, and it'll be based on two out of your three best finishes on the AVP Gold Series. So top teams really kind of jockeying for position, and this is their first opportunity to do so. There's Larissa, 167th Pro Beach Tournament, 67 career wins, a three-time Olympian, and very surprising that uh, she never made it to the finals of the Olympics, being there three years, having such a dominant career. She ended up with a bronze in the 2012 games, but her career kind of coincided with Misty May and Carrie Walsh. And that was kind of the team that was always in the way. It's similar to like a Phil Mickelson. He coincided with Tiger Woods. Imagine how many more tournament Titles. victories he would have. And so Larissa was something special, 67 times on top of that podium. Yeah, just remarkable. And not just that, the three-time Olympian, but you go through the accolades, as I have them pulled up in front of me right now, too. I mean, she has hit every single category you could, whether it was most outstanding player, the best setter, which I mentioned the number of times she won, the best offensive player, best hitter, best defensive player. I mean, the list goes on and on. So much respect for every facet of her game. Nice serve. In trouble, R. Quiggle and Skirmerhorn. This is what you don't want, an easy free ball for Larissa. She's just so good. I think she, in her prime, was number one at converting balls that would be dug in the backcourt. She would play spectacular defense, but that's only half the play. Putting it away is, is, you know, the other half. And she would do it. It was like, if she dug that ball, it was almost like 95% that she was going to convert. Yeah, without a doubt. And then again, you look right there. She's earning points even from the service line. Not necessarily hard driven, but so much deception in her approach, right? Everything looks similar and just like that ball as it lands out of bounds, but very close. But same approach, same type of tempo, and then just changes up her arm speed at that last second. Larissa not too happy that that ball ended up about a half an inch long. She wanted the ref to go check it out. And uh, it's tough, you know, she's, she's funny. She puts a lot of pressure on, if she's asking, she's serious. She's like, I want you to get down off you're of that. You're going to do it. And you're going to do it. 15-10, <laughs> Larissa and Lily. I would climb out of this booth and just go check it if she looked at me and asked. <laughs> Don't mess with Larissa. Don't mess with Corinne Quiggle. That was a beautiful swing right there. I think that set just kind of got away from where Corinne was actually going. She did a nice job with her last two steps to step in, but Lily not necessarily recognizing the set location. 
Yeah, what you're going to get from Larissa and Lily, and there's another beautiful set, maybe a little low, but their ball control is so solid, and they're not going to give up many easy points. They're going to make you earn every single one. So it's about playing consistent, and that's what they've done right here, and they already have a five-point lead. Like a double up, Lily jumping into the angle and Larissa playing the angle as well. Good recognition by Skirmerhorn and Quiggle there. And I like that Quiggle and Skirmerhorn are out here in long sleeves. <laughs> they don't care about the heat. That pass about 15 feet off the net. But look how easy Brazil right there getting out of trouble. Yeah, even then, uh, you know, it's so funny. I was talking to, I believe it was Rich Lamborn earlier today about out of system setting. And one of the critical elements he talked about is just got to get it up there high enough and get it up to the net. Give your partner a chance to do something with it. And that was a perfect example. Corinne Quiggle is taking some cuts at the ball right now. Every chance she gets, she's taking some swings. I like it. Yeah, loving her aggressiveness, and that's what it takes, right? Consistency and aggression out there. Take advantage. When you have an opportunity to rip the ball, you rip it, and now it's right down the middle that A serve. So maybe a bit of a comeback here for Quiggle and Skirmer. Fourteen serving seventeen. That one's going to be long, so make it fourteen serving eighteen as Larissa goes back to serve originally out of Vitoria, Brazil. Oh, that's just so mean. Her shoulders were completely towards the line. And the funny thing is she didn't even really cut that ball in regards to the shape she had off of her hand. She actually just kind of slap shot that. Watch. Shoulders into the line. There's some spin on that, but she just slaps that into the angle. And she created that entire play. First the short yeah. serve, took the approach out, knew that the player was going to go short angle, waited, baited him into it, and then slid in, dug it, made it look easy, and then deceived you with the offense. And all that's happening in, you know, split as seconds. As a plan to her. Yeah. <laughs> it's very She's intentional. Four, yes, yes, without a doubt. Very intentional. She's just a, a student of the game. She knows all the angles. She knows when a player is facing a certain direction, what their opportunities are. And she's probably calculating those in her head, the probability. And it's so fun to see really great volleyball played. Yeah. And that's what she has done her entire career and is continuing to do it into her 40s. There's a look at some numbers that definitely stick out. 688 for Lily and Larissa. And it's interesting, too, 467. We mentioned the number of cuts we've seen from Corinne Quiggle. They are finding, at times, ways to put the ball away in terms of staying aggressive. It's just a few things here and there. It's a five-point differential in terms of offensive efficiency. What a dig. Even then, she stresses the defense from 10 feet off. Right. Instead of just putting it in the middle of the court, she goes for one of those Down nice the line. deep in a deep corner. Yeah, yeah, over the shoulder. You can always be putting the opposition in a tougher position, even in a free ball situation. Beautiful roll shot. Nice call by Larissa. Great execution by Lily. 20 to 15, they've been in control the entire time. And they have their first set point. Oh, poke shot is good to get to 16 for Quiggle and Skirmerhorn. 
Gonna have to really roll the dice to get back in this one. Maybe rips, rip a couple serves. It's a nice jump float by Quiggle. And nice dig by Quiggle. Can she convert? Yes, she can. A little drop shot, pokey. Nice execution there. And the reason that dig, not only was it hard driven and she gets it up, but I love the fact that she's protecting the seam right here. That's not easily done. As a defender, you're thinking maybe to my right side, that's where I might be liable, which is a nice job picking that up on her left side on the seam. Set point number two. That ball out of bounds. Actually, I should say set point three that was. And this will be set point number four. And Lily and Larissa taking a couple of deep breaths, trying to re recover here. They just need one side out to win this first set. And there's the set and the put away by Larissa. And that'll put set number one in the books. Larissa and Lily winning 21 to 18. We'll see if Quiggle and Skirmerhorn can turn this around in the sweltering heat here in Atlanta. Get ready for a whole new wave of White Claw. New full flavor White Claw Surf. Sensational refreshment for a taste like no other. We all know it's a good idea to recycle. But what happens to that aluminum can or all that paper after you put it in the recycling bin? Where does it go? What does it become in its second life? See how WM is always working for a sustainable tomorrow at WM.com slash stories. It's the choices we make that define us. Try and Trevor is coming off a tough, heartbreaking loss. And ultimately, the enemy is within. Some people want it. Some wish for it, but others make it happen. Try and Trevor is super lethal, bringing fire and passion to the court. How will you take charge? Welcome back to Center Court here at Atlantic Station. The AVP Gold Series set number one is over and take a look at the stats from set one. Yeah, right away you see the efficiencies on both of these teams. They actually leveled out quite a bit as there was that nice push from Quiggle and Skirmerhorn that was right at the end of set number one. Let's see if they can carry that over into set number two in terms of building up some offense against this deadly team of Larissa and Lily who have been phenomenal in terms of turning points. That's a great start right there by Skirmerhorn. A nice controlled roll shot down the line. And it wasn't as if Quiggle and Skirmerhorn had a really poor match. No. It was just Larissa and Lily kind of <laughs> taking it to them, not taking advantage of some of the plays maybe like that. Skirmerhorn taking advantage of the errant pass there. Yeah, it's a really strong start right out of the gates. 
not only is it just two points, but it's kind of how they came about and also the energy you see after the point. It's indicative of Quiggle and Skirmerhorn setting up something beautiful as now they're up 3-0. Skirmerhorn playing a little more aggressive up at the net, as she should. She's got the height, she's got those long arms. She should own the net. Going after Larissa right now. Same, line to line, forcing her to take that middle. That's four straight. And like you mentioned, it's interesting. They're going line to line in terms of serve, but they're also serving into that middle zone where Larissa, it's right on L L Larissa's left shoulder. So like we talked about, typically that cross court is going to be taking that middle ball. But right now they know Larissa wants every side out opportunity she can get. Solid net play, I think, by Skirmerhorn really started this off. We mentioned earlier she played at Elon College. She was a middle blocker there, ending her career with over 1,000 kills, 381 blocks, which was fourth most in school history at the time. And following graduation, played some professional ball in Denmark as well as in France. So she has had quite the career. Check out the top eight women's seeds. The women in yellow right there, the teams in yellow are... In the contenders bracket. Contenders bracket already. You don't see that very often. Yeah, especially you see the number three seed there, Chang and Flint. Cloth and Nuss are also in the winner's side of the bracket. It's interesting coming in, you're, you're wondering who in the world is gonna be taking the women's side as well as the men's side. But it's interesting because we have yet to see Hughes and Kalinski take a title on the 2022 season that they may be one in contention with a shot as they also remain in the top of the winner's bracket as the number two seed. They were the only team in the top four seeds to have not won yet. Yeah, we, ha we haven't even had a two-time winner yet on the men or the women's side. The only player that's actually won two events would be Phil Dahlhauser, and he did that with two different partners, Andy Benish in Austin and Casey Patterson in New Orleans. So as it sits in terms of on the winner's side for the women, it's Cannon and Sponsel versus, versus Cloth and Nuss. And then Muno and Wilkerson versus Hughes and Kalinski. 5-2, a little different story here in set number two. Quiggle and Skirmerhorn starting to assert themselves. No two-time winners. There you see, we're gonna look at that graphic again here. Was up and gone just like that. <laughs> I think the heat's getting to you, Dane. <laughs> Great block there by Lillian. There it is. <laughs> Taryn Kloth and Kristen Nuss, the girls from LSU winning in Austin, and then Kelly Chang and Betsy Flint, New Orleans, and Therese Cannon and Sarah Sponsor winning for the first time in Hermosa, and then how about Tina Gradina and Haley Harward winning I mean, last week? Can we I talk mean, about the last two, though? That's four first-time winners ever in their career. So fun on the women's side. Larissa finishing that ball. Now they have three titles on the season, but on the tour series, could these two maybe win a pro series or a gold series event? Yeah, for those of you out there that don't know, there's three levels of tournaments. There's the, the tour series, above that is the pro series, and the very specialty events are the gold series, which are only three of them. This being the first here in Atlanta, the next one will be Manhattan Beach, and then the final one will be in Chicago, Labor Day weekend, and the players playing for an opportunity in those gold series events to make it to the AVP championships, which are going to be held in Phoenix in late September. So I know a lot of the players are really fired up 
about playing to get into that specialty event at the end. Yeah, and there's a look at your remaining schedule for 2022, closing it out in December. But yes, to your point, you know, when I was talking to a lot of these athletes prior to this season even beginning, and 16 tournaments came out on the schedule from all three divisions, that was one of the first things they all talked about was just the excitement that there's something to fight for in terms of getting into Phoenix and then having one based off Gold Series finishes. So this rally continues. A little bit of a push now from Larissa and Lily, but yeah, without a doubt, the, the Gold Series culminating into Phoenix is something that all those athletes are fighting for. Just six spots up for grabs. 7-5, Quiggle and Skirmerhorn. That ball served long out of bounds by Larissa. And Larissa grabs her visor and chucks it in the sand. You want to talk about the greats of all time? There's a lot of things that they can be characterized, but holding themselves accountable is one of those. She's about ready to punt that ball. Yeah, not not happy. She's she's she doesn't like giving away points, right? That's, yeah, exactly. And, and you shouldn't. <laughs> A little frustration right there. The thing with Larissa, usually, you know, she does her her thing, whether it's throwing her hat or you know slapping the ball, and then it's on to the next point. Yeah. What? A snag right there from Skirmerhorn. Okay, that you can't you can't walk just past that. That was beautifully done right there. Pulling into the angle as a blocker to then have to play that ball out in front of you where you're kind of handcuffed. That was really tough high level volleyball from Skirmerhorn. Yeah, it takes a lot of discipline to do that. To even drop into the angle is it's difficult. It's hard. And they continue to try and drop into the angle. That time it goes Larissa's way as she kind of fluffs one to the deep corner. Portuguese is coming out between Larissa and Lily right now. I think some communication in terms of their set location. A little chatter. Lily, the full-time blocker. She'll run to the net. As she does just about every time. And that ball hit out of bounds. That's the type of play you can't afford. You gotta keep that ball in. You gotta force the other team to do something. Yeah, but even then, Larissa was standing right there. That was an impressive play, especially out of the attack out of the middle. She read that angle well. Tight, tight. A little tight set. And usually the shorter player has a little leverage. That being the case right there, Quiggle kind of pushing up into Lily's block and winning the joust. Can you translate that? <laughs> My Portuguese isn't up to par. Okay. Sorry. I do know Larissa liked that set. A little bit of extra lift there off that pass as well as the set. And Larissa knows more than anyone, they got that first set under their belt and they do not want to go three if they don't have to. And Skirmerhorn playing so well just freezes Larissa. And as soon as that ball was hit, she knew there was no way to turn and go get it. Gotta love the heads up play right there. A couple just bang, bang plays up at the net. Skirmerhorn doing a nice job getting good contacts. And then Quiggle just finds a deep corner. She kind of hung on with that platform just a second longer, holding Larissa in her defense. Oh, Quiggle was there. She was on the cut. I love Quiggle's effort. Every single time she's laying it out and she's getting her hand on a lot of these hits. and. As a, as a hitter, when you see that, you start to think, hey, maybe you have to do a better shot and do a better shot. So it's not all about getting the play every single time. It can help you when you're just touching it because that offensive player is going to try to hit a better ball next time and maybe it's out of bounds. Larissa and Lily, AVP match record 40 
and 15, 70. 5%, 31 and 1 when winning the first set. Wow, that's one of the <laughs> most impressive records we've seen after winning the first set, I think. Everyone has a really high one, but 31 and 1, I don't know if we've had better than that. A lot of those, though, you got to remember, too, what division are they playing in, right? It doesn't mean that it's any less of an accomplishment by any means, but where are those wins coming from? That's something you got to take into note as you take a look at Quiggle and Skirmerhorn, the AVP match record, eight and seven. And 0 oh and five and losing the first set. So right now they're trying to change that record number. They put themselves in a good position to do so. And I will say, it's only a matter of time. I think Larissa and Lily are going to be knocking down the semifinals doors and the finals doors very, very soon, if not here in Atlanta. That's a team that can win at any level, whether it's the Tour, the Pro, or the Gold Series. No question about it. They won in Muskegon, they won in Denver, and they won last week in Atlantic City. And you know what it's done for them is put them in great position for these Gold Series and, and Pro Series events. Because of the number of points they've won from winning those, it puts them in a much better seeding standard to be able to have a little bit of a, an easier path, per se. Maybe you're not having to face that number one seed first round, right? Yeah, all the points taken into consideration, and it's all about getting that good position in the draw as Lily blocks that ball but doesn't know where it got deflected, almost hit her in the head on the way down. Quiggle and Skirmerhorn, 13-10. Nice jump float served by Skirmerhorn. It's passed well by Larissa. And I believe that hit just the outside of the line. John King's all over it. I think he's going to call this ball in. Larissa and Lily convinced that ball's in. currently 90 degrees here, but I will say the heat index is now up to about 100 degrees, 55% humidity. This feels like one of the hottest parts of the day, even after yesterday. There it is, it's ruled inbounds by the head referee. Take a look at it right here. Oh, it is close, very close. Skirmerhorn and Quiggle, gonna Put that in the rear view mirror. Try to move on to the next play, but they shanked that one. So this one starting to heat up now about midway through. It's 13-12, a one-point ball game. <laughs> Make it 13 all, the ace trickler. And that is enough for Quiggle and Skirmerhorn. They say, let's take a seat and figure things out. That's the hard part, right? You come out so strong out of the gates. You've got a nice lead, but Larissa and Lily just continue to chip one after another away. Especially when one's like that fall. That's just brutal. Not much you can do there with the trickle. Larissa and Lily winning their first round against Aurora Davis and Tegan Van Guntz. That was 21-17, 21-13. Then they lost to Cloth and Nuss. 18-21, 21-23 to arrive at this point. Yeah, and it's interesting because on the other side of the net, as these two, Larissa and Lily, have played just about a every AVP event that you could be playing, and Quiggle and Skirmerhorn, I mentioned, have been doing the, the, the international trek as you take a look at our heat index here at 98 degrees. But it's interesting because there have been some pretty solid finishes for these two internationally. The one that sticks out is uh, in, in Portugal, in Espino, where they actually took a second place finish and made it all the way to that final, losing to Artacho and Clancy, that scary Australian team. Ball just wide. They've also walked away with a ninth, a couple ninth place finishes internationally in Doha and in Turkey. Yeah, they've been racking up their frequent flyer mi miles for sure. Jumping back and forth as Larissa 
puts that away. And I told you about Larissa's road to this point. So why don't we tell you about Quiggle and Skirmerhorn. They lost to Julius Goals and Gina Urango, 11-21 and 18-21. And then they defeated Geb Hart and York, 21-14, 21-18, to get to this point. We're deadlocked at 14 points apiece here in the second set. The Brazilians, Larissa and Lily, won set number one. right there. Skirmerhorn again really turned up her, her blocking a notch here in the second set. And Larissa's throwing wow. sand. We saw the visor, then we saw the sand. Maybe it's the sunglasses next as the ace comes right up the middle. Yeah, I don't you know, what's happening right now with Larissa and Lily, a little miscommunication, and give credit to Skirmerhorn and Quiggle serving it down the middle and creating that indecision. <laughs> Lily fired up right there. Can they come back? They've dug themselves a hole. It was 14 all, and then it went to 14 17 quickly. That's a nice set. And is it out? <laughs> <laughs> Lily is uh, doing a little matrix move, just trying to get out of the way of the ball. Yeah, she was laying out of bounds, and the ball <laughs> almost hit her, which would have been ruled in. And then she goes the to the crowd. The glasses would have been gone. The glasses yeah, would have sure. been gone. For sure. We've all already lost one visor. And now it's a one-point game. Four aces, four errors. Oh, bye-bye ball. Lily decided to drop based on the pass, something you should never do. You got to base it on the set. This is an errant pass, but then the set ends up being perfect. Just doesn't have time to recover. tough right there. I like the fact that Skirmerhorn took away the space. She was well lined up, but she tries to adjust with those hands right at the last minute, try and bring that ball back into the interior of the court, but just about a foot off the net in terms of her press kind of resulted in that ball going out. Now, if you're Quiggle and Skirmerhorn right now, you, you're in the driver's seat. Yeah, you side out, point. you got a two-point lead. This is where you got to make sure your game is clean. Definitely put themselves in a good position. Seen a couple of those from Corinne Quiggle. I like little little poke, yeah. drop pokey shots. They're really quick. It's all you need, though. Get it right by the block. It's gonna fall. Well, and because she's come in so hard and so aggressive, that's what's allowing her kind of those short balls around the block. <laughs> Lily's having to respect the hard driven ball from Corinne Quiggle. No one knows it better than Larissa, the importance of getting off the sand in these types of conditions. Mm -hmm. And you better believe they do not want to go three, but that's exactly what Quiggle and Skirmahorn want after losing that first set. 18, serving 19, make it 18-20. And we'll have our first set point for Quiggle and Skirmahorn. 20 serving 18. Nice pass. Tight set. Nowhere to go for Larissa. 
as the shadow of Skirmerhorn just covers that hit straight down. Skirmerhorn, wow, give her a ton of credit. Completely different blocker in set number two. Yeah, just an incredible play right here. I love the adjustment. Remember, we talked about it in set number one, where at times we saw her pulling off the net, which she's made some good moves, especially into set number two, but better recognition there, staying at the net. And also, they're going at Larissa in the side out, I think trying to maybe challenge the set location of Lily. And right now it's playing in their favor. Yeah, it's it's so interesting knowing that Larissa can set the ball so well. You almost want to just go to her so she, you take that out of the equation. Yeah, exactly. Skirmerhorn and Quiggle turning up their game. Let's check out the White Claw spike of the day. Right here, up on the net, and it's Quiggle who has been unleashing from the right side. Lily made that fake drop move and did not have time to recover. Quiggle saw the open net, and that's our White Claw spike of the day. I just like that that one uh, left the entire stadium. Bounced right on out. Still going. Still going. <laughs> Might land tomorrow. <sighs> Higher than a Phil Dahlhauser skyball from last night. That was pretty funny. Watching all four athletes start off the match with skyballs. That was Tim Baumgren, Marciniak, and Phil and Casey Patterson. And it was, it was quite quite a scene to see how fired up Phil was. He was the fourth and everyone kind of coaxed him into doing the sky ball. He had the biggest smile I think I've ever seen. I don't think he had that big a smile when he won the gold. I was going to say there's only one other time I've seen him smile like that and was that was winning with Andy Benish split blocking and playing down defense. <laughs> Phil likes challenges, right? There have been some fun moments for him this season, especially. It's been fun to see him have so much fun playing beach volleyball. Absolutely. Well, we're going to see probably no sky balls here in this one. This is the third set. It's to 15 points very quick. We'll switch on increments of five. No time to get in a hole and dig yourself out in this one. I think it's going to be interesting. This might come down to some tough service pressure if Larissa can kind of find that again. She's had a couple errors. You saw it in, late in the second set as well as she just adds one in there. But I also think if Lily can steady out her setting just a bit, give a tiny bit more space as she does right there, that's going to give her a lot of opportunities for Larissa to score some points. It's the in-between, right? you got to find the in-between. I'm loving the drop plays by Skirmerhorn. She's got her hands activated and ready when that ball gets hit at her face. She's digging it, and then she's converting. I think we lost the... Uh, measuring unit that we've been using to be able to see these athletes and how much distance they've traveled as well as some of their jumps. Number of jumps they've had. Adolfo doing a nice job getting it all sort of situated there on Larissa. She jumped so high she lost it. There's that perfect measurement. So she's traveled 4,390 feet thus far. 28 total jumps for her. Saw the highest point in terms of vertical. And that's what I think you have to be wary of. If that set becomes a little bit more steady for Larissa, and she becomes more and more terminal in transition as well as inside out. She put a little more heat on that she one. She did. For sure. I think she she's recognizing the urgency. Nice short serve. Trying to take the approach away from Skirmerhorn, but she handles that one well. It's only the fourth 
women's match to go three cents this week out of 18 total matches. It's so funny. Every weekend, it's different, right? Some, sometimes it's we'll have seven different. matches in a row all go three setters, and then you have a weekend like we've had so far. Let's uh, knock on wood. Don't want to jinx it, but there hasn't been a lot of three setters here on center and only four out of 18. The winner of this one will take on the winner of Kraft and Wheeler versus Day and Simo. That's in progress on court two. Second set action there. But it's interesting, you know, earlier today we had Zana Muno and Brandy Wilkerson out on the court, and they're currently sitting in a very solid position in the winner's bracket. But a big part of their play not only was it the aggressive defense of Zana Muno, but also the blocking of Brandy Wilkerson. I believe she had seven total blocks in their match against Chang and Flint, an additional two control blocks. And right now, Skirmerhorn, how about this? She's got six total blocks plus an additional control block. Now that is in three sets thus far. So it really shows the performance you saw from Brandy Wilkerson earlier today. But these blockers are stepping up big time, getting some solid reads, nice touches on the on the ball, and able to transition out, which is where you're seeing those numbers come up now on Sarah Skirmerhorn. Skirmerhorn, a force to be reckoned with, up at the net. Set number three. She's had a couple attacks, one kill there, but she's always really consistent. But you were mentioning the, the blocking, like the blocking of Brandy Wilkerson. That's that's her biggest strength for sure. And when she catches fire, you know, look out. And that team of Wilkerson and, and you know can can win tournaments, you know what I mean, if they put it all together on the right time. Yeah, without a doubt. And right now they're playing very efficient and effective volleyball. But it's interesting, too, because I love the dynamic of a blocker on the beach, right? That you're asked to do so much more than you are necessarily indoor, right? You've, you're out there by yourself. You're solo. You're having to read not only a set, but you're also reading the attacker, knowing tendencies, taking away space, making different timing moves on blocks. Whereas in indoor, a lot of times you're just rolling with the same tempo. Maybe you're asked to cover two or three different zones. But I love how dynamic these blockers have to be to be able to make plays and be really good on the beach. Yeah, and you have to be in crazy shape too, right? Yeah. They're running all the way up. And that's what's fun about tracking some of these analytics yeah. on how far the blockers are actually traveling throughout an entire match. Or the fact that you're asked to pull off the net and play defense too. <laughs> Here, move and make a play. Speaking of making plays, there's Larissa. And there's frustration right now on Lily's face. She knows that she's got to steady out her setting, right? Like, we saw it tight, and then that last one about 10 to 15 feet off. So you've got to find Goldilocks. Where is Goldilocks? That one right in the middle. Because this ball, it's hard. Yeah, you can add pressure, but it's hard to find the sand from that position. Smart veteran move right here by Lily, going over, cleaning off the glasses, slowing things down a bit, because as I mentioned, you do not want to get in too deep of a hole, a 6-4 switch, much better than a 7-3 here. There's the poke, and Quirin Quiggle all over that one, and down the line, it's a 7-3 switch, Skirmerhorn and Quiggle in complete control. Man, you think back to set number one, and it felt like it was all Larissa and Lily in terms of making plays, clean, efficient volleyball. But you got to love the way Quiggle and Skirmerhorn have just grinded through set two and right now set three even. But hey, don't take your foot off the gas pedal at this point. Continue to float serve to Larissa. That ball off the top of the net, no touch, out of bounds. It's eight to three. Quiggle and Skirmerhorn starting to pull away in this one. Larissa on the right side, that time just inside the sidelines, make it eight to four.
Remember, Corinne Quiggle and Sarah Skirmerhorn, the 10th seed. Larissa and Lily are the fifth seed, so this would be a major upset. Oh, good effort there from Lily. Look at this pull right here, a nice pull from Larissa who found herself up with the net, but not enough on it for a partner to get underneath. Nine four, Quiggle. Jump float serve, here's Larissa. Quiggles on it, can Skirmerhorn run it down? Yes! Free ball, Skirmerhorn's gonna make it all the way back to the net to block. Here comes Lily. Quiggle with all the effort in the world, but cannot control that one. What a rally. I like that they meet on the sideline right now. Okay, take a breath. You gotta love the hustle. You mentioned it from about Corinne Quiggle, but how about the hustle there from Skirmerhorn? And the fact that she still gets all the way back up to the net, that's impressive. You want to talk about conditioning? Whew, she's on it. That's also a heads up play, going the short serve after the long hustle rally. That ball is off the block and out of bounds. So it's just a three point lead as we take the turn, nine to six. And don't count these Brazilians out just yet. They can strike at any time and they can run off four or five points. Yeah, without a doubt. Look at these numbers though. This is Skirmerhorn and Quiggle in terms of distance moved and Skirmerhorn being the blocker. That's where you're seeing that extension, right? She's got to serve and run up to the net. So that's where those numbers vary a bit. And then here's Larissa and Lily, a little bit of a different setup, both similar in terms of distance traveled. Nice side, nice side, high. Wow. No, no, no. What a recovery. <laughs> That's the difference right now. Corinne Quiggle and Sarah Skirmerhorn are, are having second and third efforts. We didn't see that in the first set. You know, the play would get blocked, it'd go down. Now they're making coverage plays and then they're converting. Quiggle is there. And she's been poking the ball around Lily multiple times. Very comfortable when she comes in. Again, it, it all goes back to that aggressive approach, right? We've talked about being deceptive. That's one of those elements. And if you start out with a strong swing to start the match, you've set yourself up for a lot more success. Serve goes to Larissa. And she goes in between the defense. Skirmerhorn blocking angle and Quiggle sliding into the line. And right now Larissa and Lily gonna have to turn it up a little bit here and force the issue. You got Larissa at the net as a blocker, maybe to relieve Lily for a moment. And Lily with a tough serve. She's going to get a free ball and have an opportunity to score. And look at that, Larissa going over on the second contact and not even thinking twice about that. No, without a doubt. Beautifully set up right there. Lily doing a nice job executing the skill. At times, you know, hey, free ball's coming. It's easy to get tight, to get a little anxious, to say, all right, I, this is an easy ball. This should be routine, which is a nice job in terms of execution, putting it exactly where Larissa needed it. 11 to 8, Quiggle and Skirmerhorn with a a three-point cushion. A side out here could be crucial. There's the serve, goes to Quiggle. Nobody, let's come on! Quiggle, really deceptive there. Facing cross court and kind of froze Larissa on the line. She did not expect that ball to come back down the line. Yeah, watch this approach right here, like you mentioned. She does a nice job. I actually I kind of like Larissa's pull in terms of where she was going. It's a nice read. She set herself up beautifully. It was just a better play from Corinne Quiggle. There, Quiggle put it in the exact spot. And she goes right back to Larissa. And Larissa out of bounds. Doesn't look like they're going to get a touch either. So it's going to be 13 to 8. And this is going to be very difficult to turn around if you're Larissa and Lily. 
especially the level that Skirmerhorn and Quiggle are playing. Two points away from advancing. Nice little roll shot over the faking block of Skirmerhorn. Sarah Skirmerhorn making an error there, trying to go down the line. It was the right shot, just not executed well and just out of bounds. So make it 10 to 13. Larissa going right back to Skirmerhorn. She wants it out of the middle of the court and now cross court a little too sharp. The entire line was wide open on that one. Yeah, and Larissa has kind of got the number of Skirmerhorn in terms of the short serve, we saw back to back kind of forcing her to have to play that ball, whether it's more towards the middle and more towards that right side in terms of her attack versus on the left. So nice job by Larissa kind of shifting the offensive scheme of Quiggle and Skirmerhorn. Quiggle and Skirmerhorn have seen enough. They're going to take a little time out to think about this one up 13 11 still in control. Simple side out, right? Easier said than done to get to 14-11. I think they need this one. It's got to, it's crucial. 13-12 switch, very different than 14-11. Here's a look at some numbers for Quiggle and Skirmerhorn. As well as Larissa and Lily. Total number of attacks, their efficiency as well. These are just your set three stats. Cleaned up some of those service errors on the side of Larissa and Lily. And there's a look at match stats as well. You can see total number of jumps down at the bottom. Quiggle and Skirmerhorn, 150, or excuse me, 140 combined, as opposed to just about 70 on the other side. Here comes Skirmerhorn out of the timeout and over the block and on the outside of the line. So that's going to be a switch at 14-11. They almost ran the same play on her. Yep. Blocking her angle or cut back kind of from the middle of the court as well as playing defense in that same spot. And now it's match point for Quiggle and Skirmerhorn. Tough serve to Larissa. And that ball's blocked by Skirmerhorn. Somehow Larissa and Lily keep it alive. And here comes Quiggle. <laughs> with the aggressive hit and that will do it 15 11 quiggle and skirmerhorn a lot of ups and downs in that one yeah but i love the finish right there it's so indicative of the way corinne quiggle started the match right she was so aggressive from the beginning as not only a side out player but also as a transition option and right here look at this she goes full sin doesn't care the blocks in front of her she just challenges it and you also have to think back to Skirmerhorn. Skirmerhorn did a phenomenal job up at the net. We got to look at how many total blocks she ended up with because it was something else. Yeah, I think she changed the the, the entire match in that second set. That's when she kind of caught fire. She gave Larissa and Lily something to, to think about, whereas in the first set, they were just kind of very comfortable doing their thing. And then her presence at the net changed everything. As we look at the statistics, there you see Quiggle and Skirmerhorn slightly more efficient than Larissa and Lily hitting 429 and love those analytics at the bottom the distance traveled over 14,000 feet for Quiggle and Skirmerhorn over 11,000 what do we have 11,711 for Larissa and Lily but the crazy one is the jumps to me how do you double up in the jumps category 70 to 140 I think we might have lost a tracker or something. <laughs> Crazy analytics. For, Cam for Cameron Irwin, I'm Dane Blanton, and that is it. It's Skirmerhorn and Quiggle moving on, and that's the end of the line for Lily and Larissa. Thank you.